here visiting the cemetery myself, and uh, I was looking at some graves of some former relatives of mine, my ancestors, and reflecting on some of their memories. So, if you want to hear a story, I'll tell you a story about some of my relatives. Well, let me start. I, I don't like to brag, but this is a grave of my grandfather. And if you notice, his name is Benjamin Wright, same name as I have. But Benjamin Wright wasn't born around here. He was born out in New York on February 1st, 1837. And when he was seven years old, his father had enough of New York and said, we're moving. So they got, they joined a wagon train and they moved to Wisconsin. And they came in a wagon pulled by oxen. Long journey in those days, it took them a long time. So Benjamin grew up in Wisconsin and uh, he got old enough, around 16, he started working for people. By the time he was 24, there was a war started, and President Lincoln asked for volunteers to come and help preserve the Union. So Benjamin volunteered to join the Army, and he went and started fighting, and shortly after the war started, he was captured and sent to Libby Prison in Richmond, Virginia. And I'll tell you, there's three things that could really be bad happen to a soldier in those days. One of them was to be killed, but a lot of soldiers said there's two worse things that could happen. You could be sent to Anderson prison or Libby prison. Because you're probably going to die anyway. And you're going to suffer a long time before you do that. But Benjamin was lucky. He was only there a short time, and he was exchanged for prisoners from the South. They just did an exchange. And so he got out and went back to fight and lived through the war and then uh, after the war was over he did various jobs for three years and then he moved to this area and he met this lady named Amanda who was my grandmother and they bought a farm about three miles just east of here well in those days most people that <coughs> bought farms and it really wasn't a farm it was it was land 80 acres of land that they had to clear well, most of the farmers in those days farmed 80 acres, and they were greatly in debt. But, like I say, I hate to brag, but my grandfather somehow did 10 times more than that. He soon had 800 acres of land, was free of debt, and had hundreds of horses and cattle and all kinds of things. And uh, so he became quite wealthy. But wealth doesn't always bring happiness, and these graves kind of tell a sad story. Even though they were wealthy, they couldn't save their children's lives when they became sick because of lack of medicine, lack of medical knowledge. And their first son, named James Benjamin, died when he was like four years old. And then their second son, George, he lies buried over there. I'll tell you about him in a moment. But they had two other children, Joel and Bertha. Well, in 1878, there was this big disease that came through the Scram Meadow area, and it killed a lot of children. And two of their children died in that diphtheria epidemic. And so their hearts are broken, and they're buried here. Well, the only son that survived is, is over here. His name is George, who happens to be my father. He, uh, he survived through adulthood, and... Instead of taking over this farm, he started a business in Grand Meadow. And it was a creamery business. He ran his creamery business in Grand Meadow for a number of years. And well, when I got a little older, and I went to Shattuck. George met Christine, and they had four children. I was the oldest. I had an oldest sister named Vivian, who became a, doc, or a teacher. She taught school mostly in the Chicago area. And my next younger brother, his name was Donovan, became a very well-known psychiatrist in Chicago. When he died, they, they had a day in Chicago, just to honor him, in the whole city. And uh, then my youngest brother, Norman, he was a farmer just, just east of here. But anyway, when, when my dad died, I took over his business, and I kind of converted it from, from a creamery just to buy and sell an eggs. And I named it the Farmer's Produce, and we sold eggs all over the United States and around the world because we sold a lot of eggs to the Army and shipped all overseas. And strangely, my, uh, I had a nephew that worked for me a little bit, and he, he told me when he was in the Army, 
this was after he worked for me in loading army trucks, that he unloaded a load of my eggs in Germany from farmers' produce in Grand Meadow. And I just kind of hope it wasn't the same eggs. You know, <laughs> they weren't all that fresh anymore. But uh, that's the story he told me. And, uh, well, I, you know, I had three children. Uh, my oldest one was Priscilla, and she loved to show horses and was very successful with that. We showed all over America. And I had a son named John, who's uh, my, my daughter's still living. She's out in California. My son is living in Ohio. And then I got a son named Steve, who, I don't know, he didn't seem to like the United States. He left and went back to the old country in Norway, and he's still living over there. Uh, I think it had more to do with his sweetheart than it was the country, though. I met some lady that wanted to live there because that's where she was from. You know, and then while I was doing that, it's a lot of work running that produce, but I still did a lot of community things. I served on the school board here far more years than I can remember. But enough about work, because, you know, I, my life wasn't all about work. There's three things I really love to do. I love to hunt, and I love to fish, and I really love sports. And in 1960, 1961, the Minnesota Twins moved to Minnesota, and the Vikings came here. Boy, I had something to cheer for. One of my biggest passions was just listening to the Twins on the radio. I'd go out to see my brother Norman, and on the way there, I'd turn on the Twins, and I'd get to the farm, and boy, I, Halsey Hall and Herb Carneal wouldn't let me leave. I'd just sit in the car, listen to the game, instead of go talk to my brother. They'd often have a big rally going, and I just couldn't wait for Harmony Kilder to come up and win the game. So even though I drive out there, you know, I might be there an hour, I might listen to the twins for the first half. Well, anyway, that's enough about me. I, I gotta go. I, I, I gotta go fishing. There's fish over in Spring Valley just waiting for me to catch it. So I'm on my way.